Ever wondered why the Spanish football and league system is so difficult to understand? Anything below the second division can get lost in the sheer amount of clubs and geographical separations. So, in this video, we will go through the Spanish league system in basic terms. La Liga. We'll start with the easy one. La Liga is the top division in Spain where 20 teams compete to become national champions. It's historically been a division dominated by Real Madrid and Barcelona, who have respectively won 34 and 26 titles each. However, in the last decade, Atletico Madrid have managed to disrupt this rhythm slightly and now have 11 league titles to their name. The structure. Just to explain these things, we're going to use the most recent season as of this video's recording, which was the 2020-2021 season. So in the top half of the table, the top four teams at the end of the league season qualify for the UEFA Champions League group stages. Those finishing 5th and 6th are in a place in the UEFA Europa League group stages. And as of the 2020-21 season, the team in 7th place is entered into the UEFA Conference League. But note, this division isn't a fair representation of the actual system, as Villarreal, who had won the Europa League yet finished in 7th, automatically qualified for the Champions League. This means that no team from Spain was placed in the Conference League in the 2021-2022 season, but from now on, unless this event occurs again, the 7th place team will play in the Conference League. Now for the relegation zone, which is a fairly simple system. The three teams who finish with the least amount of points in 18th, 19th and 20th position face relegation to the Segunda Division. The Segunda Division Now the Segunda Division, commercially branded La Liga Smart Bank, is the second tier of Spain's football and pyramid. It is currently home to 22 teams who play 42 rounds of games. The top two are promoted at the end of each season. Meanwhile, the teams place 3rd to 6th, then take part in a playoff tournament after the regular season finishes, generally. The team in 3rd place plays the team in 6th place in a double-legged semi-final, while the 4th and 5th place teams do the same. This is then followed by another double-legged final, where the winner gains promotion to La Liga. And like many playoff tournaments, this has in recent years created some high drama and resulted in a number of unlikely promotions. For example, in the 2020-2021 season, Rayo Vallecano finished 6th in the table. However, Rayo actually managed to beat Leganes, who had finished third in the table in the regular season, and then beat Girona in the final, gaining promotion to Liga in the process. Now, the Segunda Division features quite a brutal relegation zone, with four teams facing the axe if they fail to gain enough points. The division also permits the entry of B teams. However, it's important to note that these reserve squads are not allowed to be promoted to Liga in any circumstance. Okay. This is where things start to get slightly more complicated, and we're talking about the Primera Ref, Spain's new third division as of the 2021-22 season. And this level of the pyramid is actually split into two separate groups, which is determined by geographical location. This generally means an east-west split in the country. The League of Western teams is referred to as Primera Group 1, whereas the Eastern group is known as Group 2. However, like many geographical specific leagues, you can't choose what teams actually end up there, and therefore you can consistently see an uneven balance between each group. For example, in the current 2021-22 season, while the majority of teams from the east of Spain play in one group, there are still some teams that face long away trips. For example, Atletico San Luqueno are only 150 kilometers away from Portugal, but are still grouped in the Eastern Division. This means a maximum away trip of 1,236 kilometers when they face FC Andorra. But, as mentioned beforehand, despite being two separate groups, teams are all defined as being third division clubs. So the structure. So the winners of both these groups when 38 rounds of matches are played gain promotion to the Segunda division. Meanwhile, the second to fifth place teams in both groups earn a playoff spot in their respective groups. So that means even in the playoffs, they remain in the groups that they played against all season. Now these playoffs see two more teams promoted to the Segunda. And that's it for promotion. In terms of relegation, well if you thought four being relegated from the Segunda was bad, then add another to that pain as five teams are relegated from each group. In this division, B teams can also play. 
However, if a first team underperform and actually end up being relegated to this division, their B team is not allowed to enter. This would happen hypothetically if, say, Celta Vigo had back-to-back -back relegations and dropped to the league where their B team currently play. Okay, now we're getting down to the really nitty gritty stuff. The Segunda Division ref is Spain's fourth division, but not like other fourth divisions around Europe. The division currently features 90 teams. Yes, 90. These teams are split into five groups of 18 separate clubs. But as with the Primera, all clubs are defined as being part of the fourth division. These four groups are also divided by the geographical locations of member clubs. Okay gonna need you to stick with me here. Group 1 is made up of teams in the country's northwest, but also Madrid teams. Group 2, teams from the north but mainly the Basque country. Group 3, mostly teams from Catalonia and the Balearic Islands. Group 4, teams from the west and south of Spain, however teams from the Canary Islands are also included. Group 5, this one is generally a bit more mixed with teams generally ranging from central Spain to its southeastern coasts. So how does promotion work from this division? Well, despite its dense grouping system, promotion is fairly simple. The top team from each of the five groups is promoted, while those who finish in second to fifth fight for promotion in each group's separate playoff tournaments. It's essentially the same system as the Primera, but there's just five groups instead of two. However, things at the bottom of the table are slightly more complicated. Five teams from each group are relegated, but four of the five teams who finish 13th in their groupings aren't exactly saved from relegation, as these clubs enter a relegation playoff, which results in two of them facing the drop. Oh well, the remaining 13th place team, who have finished with the most amount of points of all these five teams, head for their holiday safe in the knowledge that they won't be relegated. But this of course means that in two of the groupings, six teams are actually relegated. Okay, so at this point, we're at the Tercera ref which is the country's fifth division. I'm not gonna explain this one in detail in this video because it's a very, very complex league that really deserves its own video. So let me know if you'd be interested in watching something more specific on that league. So that was the Spanish football and pyramid explained. Take a few times to study if you need to because of course it does get quite complicated towards the end, but I hope that's helped you clear up your understanding and hopefully you can go in search of more interesting clubs and stories in the future. And if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe because the Partido is a new YouTube channel for Spanish football in English. And we hope to build up a community of English speakers who enjoy following the game in the country.